Hi there, I'm Shale Sage from Bittersweet. I am a bartender, bar consultant, designer, and cocktail aficionado. And today we're gonna to make some cocktails inspired from For America, um, specifically the Painting America section. I chose this section because it's a really powerful time period in not only cocktail culture, but also just American history in general. So without further ado, let's get working on this cocktail. Uh, we're gonna start off with the South Side. Okay, so for this cocktail, you're gonna need some gin. I chose Tanqueray just because it's widely available. It's a great London dry gin, uh, highly recommend it. And then we're going to need some simple syrup, uh, which I have made up here. Uh, how to make that is you just combine equal parts sugar and water over heat until it's all mixed up and then let it cool down. And then we're gonna need some uh, lime and some mint. Okay. Now, I'm making this in a julep cup because I love uh, julep cups, but uh, you can make them in a uh, Collins glass, you can serve them up in a coupe, uh, you can really drink them however you want to. So, we're going to use a really like standard um, ratio here, which is uh, two, three quarter, three quarter. So, we're going to have two ounces of gin, three quarter ounces of lime, and three quarter ounces of simple syrup. So first we're gonna start off by just taking a few mint leaves and just dropping them in the bottom of the shaker. Here. Anywhere from three to five, I would say. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna press down too hard. I'm just gonna give them kind of like a light little tamping just to start to release some of the oils that the mint's going to provide. Okay, and then I'm going to add my three quarter ounces of simple syrup. And then I'm going to use three quarter ounces of fresh squeezed lime. Do not go and buy um, you know, the pre-squeezed uh, juice at the store that comes in the thing that looks like a plastic lime, um, that will not do. Uh, definitely fresh is the only way to go. Okay, and one little trick that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put the carcass of the squeezed lime in the cocktail. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the skin of the lime holds oils, uh, and those oils really add a really nice aroma to it. Okay, so we've got that. And then we're gonna do two ounces of our gin. And you can use whatever gin you want. Um, I would say is best with a London Dry. So you could go with like Beef Eaters, you could go with uh, Gordon's, you know, you could go with Bombay Sapphire. But I just went with straight old Tanqueray for today. Okay, here, and then we're going to add ice to our shaker. Okay, here, and then we're going to give it a nice shake for about 10 seconds or so. All right, so you see how my tin's nice and frosty? It's about when you know it's gonna be done. All right, here, oops. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to strain out everything. And the reason why we do that is because if you leave mint in the bottom, it can get a little bitter and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna use a strainer and I'm just gonna strain it all out. And then we're going to Re-add ice to it. And I'm actually gonna make a variant of this cocktail. Uh, it's called a fizz. So it's basically a fizz is just adding like a soda water or something carbonated to your cocktail. And I'm gonna pack this thing with ice. So it's nice and full, so it stays nice and cold. Okay, and then I'm just gonna top it off with just a little bit of soda water. 
I like making the fizz version just because it adds a little bit of effervescence to it and does not take a lot, just, just an ounce or so. All right, now this is the most important part in my head, um, which is the garnish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a beautiful bouquet of mint. Just using one or two leaves is okay if you're doing it up. But since I'm doing it on the rocks, I want a nice bouquet of mint on top of my drink. That way, every time I take a sip, I get that nice fresh mint. All right, here. So I'm just gonna bunch it up here, give it a little slap. And then I'm just gonna set it right on top. Okay, and we made a south side. This drink is very refreshing. And uh, one interesting thing about it is um, you can swap out this recipe and basically it's a mojito if you switch out uh, gin for rum. So this is a very refreshing, very summery cocktail. Mm. Delicious. All right, so we've made the South Side. It's a really light, refreshing cocktail. Well, we're gonna do that again because it's summertime. And uh, these cocktails are gonna be great for sipping on the patio, making for friends. Okay, so let's dig into the bee's knees. It's a very simple combination of uh, lemon, gin, and uh, honey. So for the honey, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna, gonna wanna cut it uh, with one quarter water. So if you have four ounces of honey, that means you're gonna add one ounce of water to it. And what that does is it just cuts down on the viscosity of the honey. Um, and the reason why you wanna cut down on the viscosity is because you want the texture to be great. Um, a lot of people think that like just like sugar just adds sweetness. Well, it doesn't just add sweetness. Texture is the main reason why we add it to cocktails. If the texture is right, then we know the cocktail's right. All right, so first uh, we're gonna get our glass chilling. This drink should be served up if possible, uh, but you can certainly serve it on the rocks if that's what you want. All right, so we're just gonna get this glass full of ice here. Okay, just because we want it to be a nice and cold drink. All right, and then we're gonna do three quarter ounces of honey. Again, that kind of golden ratio. All right, and then we're gonna do the same with a uh, lemon. Okay, and again, fresh lemon is always the way to go. Fresh fruit. If there's one thing that I could tell bartenders, um, a way to improve their cocktails, it's use fresh juices. So we're gonna use three quarter ounces of that. And that's a perfect three quarters. Okay, and then we're gonna use two ounces of gin. And the reason why I'm doing it in this order is because if we um, mess up, uh, I don't wanna waste any alcohol because A, that's a shame, and B, uh, it's the most expensive part. So I'd rather dump the honey or the lemon as opposed to the gin if I do mess up. So we're gonna do two ounces. And again, you can use whatever gin you like. 
Uh, I find a London dry is best, but feel free to experiment. Then we're gonna add some ice to our shaker. All right, and then again, we're gonna give it a nice, you know, eight to 12 second shake. All right, my tins are nice and frosty. It's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump that ice out. This glass is nice and cold. And then I'm just going to strain it in there. And when you're straining with one of these strainers called a Hawthorne, what you wanna do is you wanna do what we call keep the gates closed. So you wanna press down as far as you can go on that spring. And that's just gonna filter out as much as possible. And your drink is done. Uh, I will say I'm gonna do an optional twist on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lemon and I'm not gonna put the twist actually in the drink. I'm just gonna express the oils around it. So I'm just gonna take a vegetable peeler cut off a little swath, and I'm just gonna lightly spritz it. You don't wanna get too close because you don't want all the oils on top. You just kinda want a nice little coating. And then I'm just gonna rub it around the rim. I might even rub it around the base where I would hold it. That way my hands smell like lemon too. And you have the bee's knees. This is a beautiful, refreshing cocktail. Cheers.